Hi guys, so today we are going to talk about tri data structure. So this particular question has appeared in AC, ACM ICPC as well. I mean, I have taken it from the ACM ICPC live archives here. So this link you can find in the description section of the video. And before watching this, make sure that you have watched my previous tri tutorial, whose link is also given in the description section and the suggested video section as well. Because all the concepts which I taught there, I'll be utilizing them here only because this question is also pretty similar. I'm not going to reiterate all those concepts because otherwise this video will bit become a bit longer. So make sure you have watched that. So let's jump into the question. The question is simple that you are given an array of non-negative integers. You have to find the subarray with maximum or value. And uh, the constraints are like all the numbers which are present in this array can easily fit in the 32-bit signed representation, signed bit representation. So sample test case, input array is 38264, output is 15. So basically if you sort the sub numbers present in this subarray, that is 38264, you will get the value of 15, which is the maximum value which you can get because no other subarray will give you the ZOR value greater than 15. So brute force way is pretty easy. You generate all the subarrays and uh, you take the ZOR of them and you find which is giving you the maximum ZOR value and return that particular value. Time complexity ON square where N is the length of the size of array and space complexity O1. Let's see how we can do something better than this. And so before jumping into the solution, let's look at some properties of ZOR. So one property is that if you do the ZOR of the same bits, that is one and one ZOR one and zero ZOR zero zero, it will give out come out to be zero. And different bits always give one, like one ZOR zero and zero ZOR one will give one. Okay. Uh, so this means that the number when it is ZOR with itself, that is n ZOR n, it will come out to be zero. And n ZOR zero will always be n. Since we are interested in the maximum ZOR value we are always interested in this particular use case and if we are uh, somehow you know not able to reach to this one we will have to go or basically default to this particular use case so in case you did not understand this we will see later and another property is that the ZOR of subarray l to r where l is less than equal to r and both l and r are inclusive can be written as ZOR of prefix subarray 1 to r ZOR with ZOR of prefix subarray 1 to l minus 1 so basically what I'm trying to say here is that ZOR of subarray 3 to 5 can be written as ZOR of subarray 1 to 5 ZOR with ZOR of subarray 1 to 2. Okay. Now uh, let's actually try to do a dry run of a, the brute force solution and then we'll formulate the try solution on top of that. Okay. This dry run will also give you some hints like uh, I'm taking the array whose length is 4 and I'm denoting the indices from 1 for the sake of simplicity. Okay. I mean, array indices start from zero, but we are taking them from one. So this particular variable is generating the ZOR of prefix subarrays, which we have seen till now. Okay, so currently we have seen no subarray, so this that's why this one is empty. And this is denoting the current prefix subarray, which we are seeing till now, and this will denote the ZOR of subarrays, which we have obtained. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is that my target is to generate all the possible subarrays. So this particular variable at the end, when we have finished the algorithm, this will actually at the end will contain all the possible subarrays. Okay. So let's see. So current prefix subarray would be the first element only that is one to one. So when I do a ZOR of one to one with this, the subarrays which we have seen till now, so I will get one to one only. Okay. Now I update this that the subarrays which we have seen till now are this first element as well. And then we update the current prefix subarray as well, which is the first two elements. Now, if I do a ZOR of 1, 2 with this empty, so it would come out to be 1, 2 only. And when I do the ZOR of 1, 2 with the subarray 1, 1, so it would come out to be 2, 2. Okay, so basically we are using this property to do the ZOR. And now we will update this that the subarrays which we have seen till now are first two elements as well and we update the current prefix subarray which is the first three elements now when we do a ZOR of this 1 comma 3 with this empty and 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2 we will obtain these values that is 1 comma 3 and then 2 comma 3 and then ZOR of 3 comma 3 okay now we update this that is the current the prefix subarrays which we have seen till now and we update the current prefix subarray which is the first four element that is the whole array itself when we do the ZOR of this with this one so we will obtain all these possible values which are what uh, 1 comma 4 and then it would be 2 comma 4 and then 3 comma 4 and then 4 comma 4 so you can clearly see here that we have actually generated all the possible subarrays okay and we, you can also keep track of the ZOR value of these and eventually return the maximum ZOR value. So this particular procedure is able to generate all the possible subarrays. The time complexity for this is O n square. 
okay and i mean one factor of n is coming from the fact that we are taking all the possible n sub arrays and one factor is coming that another factor of n is coming from this that the current prefix sub array is absorbed with all the prefix sub arrays which we have seen till now okay so if we can somehow reduce that second factor we can basically bring down the time complexity and we can use try to re reduce that and how we are going to reduce that is we are actually interested in the maximum zor value which do not so that's why we do not like when i am looking at this current prefix sub array which is one comma four that is the first four elements i do not need to do the zor of this with all the pos prefix sub arrays which we have seen till now i can actually store all the zor value of all these prefix sub arrays which i have seen till now in a try okay and the way i will store them is that uh basically the in the try the root to leaf path will represent the zor value written from most significant bit to least significant bit so all of this i taught already in my previous tutorial so that's why i told you i mean make sure that you have watched that before watching this one because i won't reiterate all those concepts here okay and now whenever i am looking at this current prefix sub array so what i can do is that i can use this property that the different bit always give the maximum zor value so i can always try to you know go to that particular path in the try which has a different bit and in case that path does not exist i will fall back to the path where they have same bits okay so the try algorithm will look something like this that this is representing the maximum zor value and this is representing the current prefix zor value and in try we first insert this zero because like initially there is nothing in no sub arrays which we have seen till now so the try will have zero now we iterate from i to n and we will update the current prefix or value okay and we will insert that in the try and when we have inserted that we will try to find the maximum or value of this prefix or okay so what we are doing is like this particular step what it is doing it is basically doing this only that it is taking this particular sub array and trying to see which particular sub arrays which we have seen till now can give us the maximum or value okay and this like i have already taught you how this query part will work in my previous video so make sure you have watched that and we update the max or value here as the max of max or and whatever we have obtained from this try query and we eventually return this okay and like this particular algorithm will make sure that we have obtained the maximum zor sub array because as you already saw here that this procedure is actually able to generate all the possible sub arrays okay so we are basically not missing any sub array so let's look quickly look at the code of this so the code is here and like this is the try node which i have written okay so the try node has basically a member variable called children vector of children this is the constructor of the try node and you can see that the length of the children vector will be 2 and initially both of them are null ptr like length is 2 because there are only two possible bits representation bits possible in the bitwise representation of an integer like 0 and 1 and initially both of them are null ptr because known because the node has no current children right now and this is just the destructor where i am deleting both the children to free the memory and this is just a utility method to create child if it is not present so it takes this index and it checks basically if this index is equal to equal to null ptr then it would create it and it would return this child so this is the try class so it has the root node okay and default constructor destructor which are where i'm basically deleting the memory so we're deleting this root node to free the heap memory and this has the insert method and the maxor method so the maxor method is that query method only so this would actually insert this number and this would actually return the maximum or value of this number possible with all the values which are present in try right now so the way we are doing insertion in try is that like i have already taught this in the previous video so what we are doing is that each number we are representing as a 32 bit number in the try so basically the height of the try would be like 32 it actually it would be 31 only because the in the 32 bit representation one bit is rep reserved for representing the sign of the number okay and from root to leaf we are representing the number as from most significant to least significant bit so that's what we are doing here i receive a request to insert this number in try so i initialize my current no node as the root node uh, this is like this we will see why we are using this temp value so i start iterating from 30 to 0 because we are basically 
inserting the 31 possible bits of the number in the array and I see if since we are basically representing the number from most significant to least significant bit in the try so that's why the current temp is basically first representing the bit at the 31st position basically the msb so i check if i take the bitwise end of this temp with a num if it comes out to be zero basically if that bit is set in case that bit is set so i will create the child if not present and uh, the child created would be the bit one and in case that that bit is not set the child i would create would be the bit zero okay and eventually i will basically do a right shift of this number by one bit because now i have to check the next bit and this way we will like check all the bits from msb to lsb okay and the maximum or the way we are obtaining maximum or is that whenever we are given this number we need to find the maximum or with all the numbers present in the try so i initialized my current node as a root node again i will start from msb to lsb so that's why i have shifted the this temp 30 bits to the right left and this is the answer which will store the maximum or value we start iterating from msb to lsb that is from root to leaf node of the try i check if the current bit is set in the number so if this bit is set to obtain the maximum or value i need to go to the to that path like if this bit is set so it means that at this particular position one is present in this number so different bits yield the maximum or value okay so if one is present in this bit then i need to go to the path which has zero so that's why i'm checking if the current node has the bit zero as children okay if that is not null ptr then i would basically go to that node and i will also update my answer like i will set this bit in my answer okay because if you remember the zor well uh, the property of zor that is different gifts bits give zor as one and same bits give zor as zero so that's why i'm doing this else if the different bit is not possible then we do not have any option i need to come to that like bit one and in in that case we will not set anything in the answer okay because the bit value at that particular position position would be zero and similarly if this bit is not set like if we are in the else then it means that current bit is zero in number i need to go to the path which has basically to that node which has the bit one so i check if the current node has a children at as bit one and if it has that is if it is not null ptr i will set this particular bit in my answer and i would change my current node to this the node with the bit one as child else if it is not there then we have to basically default to the bit with the same value and eventually i do a right shift of my temp because we are we have to basically look at all the bits from msb to lsb and eventually we return this answer so here is the main function like this is the number uh, this is the array for which we need to find the maximum or value i insert zero in the try and here i've initialized my answer and this is the current or value of the prefix current so our value of the current prefix subarray which we are seeing for every number i basically update this prefix or value i insert this in the try and i try to find the maximum zor of this number and eventually print the answer okay so if you see here that for this test case which we had in the sample test case as well 38264 the output is coming out to be 15 and you can also try this here in the icbc live archives Okay, I will paste the codes link in the description section of the video. So thank you guys for watching. Please do not forget to like, subscribe and comment on this video and I'll see you all next time.